Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the New York Genealogical and Biographical Society webinar series. My name is Fred Wirtz, and I'm the Director of Digital Services at the NYGNB. I'll be presenting tonight's webinar, but wanted to cover a few quick items before we begin. First of all, this presentation is organized and operated by the NYGNB. This is a pre-recorded webinar that is being broadcast live. You're the first members of the public to see this presentation, but a recorded version will be available for NYGNB members to watch on demand in our webinar library. There's a PDF handout that accompanies the presentation. You will see an icon on the right side of your screen that allows you to download it. You may also ask questions during the presentation by clicking the question icon at the lower right-hand edge of your screen and typing it into a window that pops up. As a reminder, this presentation is under copyright and may not be reproduced or shared in any form without prior written permission of both the speaker and the NYGNB. One final thing before we begin, uh, and we'll cover all of this in, in the webinar as the webinar is about our website, uh, but I just wanted to make sure that you keep an eye out for our twice a month email newsletter, the NYGNB eNews. You can also take a look at upcoming events on our events calendar for more upcoming webinars and other events. And if you'd like to keep up with us on social media, we recommend following us on Facebook or Twitter. We post all of our blog articles, events, and videos there as soon as they're available. Finally, I'd like to point out that we have a great section of free resources available on our website. Only NYGNB members gain access to the full website, but our free resources section has very useful collection of guides, videos, and other content that'll be really useful for members and non-members alike. And of course, as I said, given the topic of tonight's webinar, we'll return to all of these items in more detail throughout the presentation. So let's get started. This afternoon, I'm here to talk to you about the NYGNB's website and how everyone, NYGNB members, but also those who are not NYGNB members, can use the website to make leaps and bounds in their family history research. Before we begin, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. As the Director of Digital Services at the NYGNB, I do a number of things. I direct all web development efforts, which included a complete overhaul of our website in 2017, and right now we're in the middle of building a brand new e-library, which is a very exciting project I look forward to sharing with you soon. I also plan and execute our digital engagement, which includes social media, video production, our email newsletter, the NYGNB e-news, and articles on the NYGNB blog. Finally, I also manage our internal IT infrastructure, which helps ensure our offices and overall operations run as smoothly as possible with all things technology. Academically, I studied at Fordham University up in the Bronx in New York City. I got my bachelor's and master's degree there in American history. So today we're going to take an in-depth look at our website, newyorkfamilyhistory.org. Let's go over a few very high-level things about the website. First of all, perhaps the most important thing, the website address. The full URL of our website is www.newyorkfamilyhistory.org. However, you can also type nygbs.org, and that'll take you there as well. We think of nygbs.org as our short URL, and this automatically redirects anyone who types it into their browser bar uh, to the full address, www.newyorkfamilyhistory.org. Uh, it's convenient, and it's certainly less to type out uh, if you just want to get to our website very quickly. So moving forward, and whenever you see any uh, NYGNB web address in the future, know that you can, instead of typing newyorkfamilyhistory.org, you can just shorten that to nygbs.org, and you will be taken to the same exact website. So as I mentioned, in uh, 2016 and 2017, we did a major overhaul of our website, essentially rebuilding it from the ground up. Uh, this, this was the beginning or sort of a first phase of a larger strategic plan for our website and our overall digital presence. Building a new e-library is now the next major thing on this path forward. 
And what we did was we we overhauled the theme and design of the website, uh, which has a now a sort of a new modern look. Uh, we also improved the navigation of the various sections. Uh, as you'll see, you can find your way to pretty much any section of the website with just one click. Um, you know, in general, we have a huge volume of helpful information uh, in a wide variety of formats. And one of my favorite things about our site as it is right now is that users can really easily discover content that is related to their interests that they may not have otherwise found. Um, I also should mention that our site is now fully responsive, which means that it will adapt its layout to any size screen. Uh, so that means that if you're browsing on a, a mobile phone or a tablet or really anything in between, uh, our website will be very usable and easy to navigate. Uh, so we consider it mobile friendly. Finally, uh, you know, one of the, the main features of our new website uh, is one that allows members more control over their information and preferences. Um, so not only is the site highly secure, but members can now log in and update aspects related to their membership or status with the NYGNB, including their name, their mailing address, their email address, uh, publication delivery preferences, and more. So in general, this website is built for you, the researcher, the constituent, the NYGNB member. We now serve so many people who are not located physically in New York State, and we feel very strongly that the best way to do this is to make our resources as accessible as possible over the internet. So even though we do focus on New York State, we're truly a global community, and we have users accessing our resources every day from all over the world. But beyond our motiv motivation to better serve our constituents, um, I really think that our website and the internet in general is just the latest tool with which our organization uh, can achieve our mission. So here is our current mission statement, uh, and that is that the New York Genealogical and Biographical Society preserves, documents, and shares the stories of families across the state of New York. We engage with genealogists, biographers, historians, and organizations to establish the broader context of New York's past. The NYGNB actively fosters connections between New York's past and present. So we've been striving to fulfill this mission since we were founded almost 150 years ago in 1869. As time moves on and history evolves, so does the NYGNB. So let me talk briefly about the history of the NYGNB and technology before we begin exploring the website. Even though we're a genealogical and biographical society very much focused on the past, the NYGNB has always embraced contemporary technology and leveraged it to better help researchers and better fulfill our mission. So what did that mean 100 years ago? Uh, in you know, the late 19th and early 20th century, researchers obviously didn't have access to computers or the internet. And in fact, many records were handwritten and any sort of images or photographic copies of these records were many decades from existing. Even microfilm wouldn't really be used to document images in a widespread capacity until the late 1920s. So uh, shortly after it was founded, uh, the NYGNB began printing typeface transcriptions of records in our quarterly periodical, The Record. Even though such transcriptions are commonplace, you know, you and I see them everywhere today, this at the time was a major boon to researchers everywhere back then. In some cases, it was no longer necessary to locate original copies of these genealogically relevant records, and the, the need to work with old handwritten documents was greatly minimized. And because the record was mass produced and mailed all over the country, this allowed researchers from far outside the state to explore the history of New York State families. This was a monumental breakthrough for New York genealogy research. So many members and employees of the NYGNB have contributed to this effort. Uh, really far too many to list here, but I do want to point out two individuals, both of whom were active with the NYGNB in the early 1900s, almost exactly 100 years ago. NYGNB archivist Royden Woodward Vosberg traveled all over New York State transcribing in exquisite detail all religious records that he could find. He captured the records of over 100 congregations in 22 counties of New York State. His transcriptions were done with the utmost care and expertise, and they've been serving as crucial vital record substitutes for researchers for over 100 years. And again, these appeared originally as uh, 
a series of articles and the record. Um, but the the key thing here was that these were bound and typeface, you know, which allowed them to be mass produced and distributed far and wide. Josephine Frost is another notable contributor. Her cemetery transcriptions, which are mainly from Long Island, uh, preserve genealogically relevant details from cemeteries that were either rapidly deteriorating or were soon to be destroyed or built over. And again, since this took place, you know, about 100 years ago, many of those uh, cemeteries are now gone and the information they contained would have been completely lost if not for these transcriptions. So, and, and just like Vosburgh's transcriptions, these were written in typeface and were able to be printed in large qualities so that they could be distributed to researchers everywhere. And of course, many others have done similar work throughout history, even up to the present day. And we're so thankful for our current friends and colleagues and those uh, in the past who continue or have in the past transcribed records and allow us to share them with researchers everywhere. So why am I talking about this? Uh, well, I just wanted to point out that our website is the best way for the contemporary NYGNB to carry forth uh, this sort of this torch or this tradition of preservation and access. And so, you know, these days we aren't so much focused on producing bound printed volumes of record transcriptions, but rather we've shifted gears into producing searchable digital images of those volumes that were created by the NYGNB in the past. And of course, now we still have plenty of original records uh, that can thankfully be digitized directly and then linked to searchable online indexes. And we're still creating these to these day, uh, to this day, excuse me. Uh, as you can see from the images below, we have a really active core group of volunteers who routinely assist in digitizing the many physical documents that we plan uh, and continue to add to our e-library and website. So this is all to say, uh, even though our society is historical in nature, we're very much focused on making history, you know, genealogical and biographical history in particular, uh, accessible for the modern world and beyond. And right now, our website is the primary tool that we use to do that. Okay, so after that introduction and context, uh, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to look at in this webinar. Uh, our website really has so many resources that it is, is absolutely not possible to cover them all in detail today. So I plan to provide a very general overview and I really encourage you all to go out and explore the website uh, with what you see uh, here in today's webinar. So the first thing we'll look at is using uh, the website sort of for informational purposes about the NYGNB. Uh, you can keep up with us, you can learn what we're doing now, learn about what we do traditionally, uh, you can find upcoming events and initiatives, uh, and you can also get involved if you wish. We'll then look at a wide variety of website content that can help you become a better researcher and will equip you with the knowledge to navigate the challenge of finding ancestors in New York State. Finally, this is something I'm sure we're all interested in here. Uh, we'll look at our e-library and our uh, digital collections, you know, many of which cannot be found anywhere else online. Uh, and we'll look at a few of our most popular collections in detail, and then I will uh, take you through sort of how to use the e-library and search and do all that sort of stuff. Oops, sorry, so I'm going to step out here and take you over to the website. Uh, as I mentioned, we could do www.newyorkfamilyhistory.org if we wanted to, uh, but let's just try that short URL. That's the one I always use, nygbs.org, and you'll see we are taken uh, right to the homepage of the website. Uh, so I just want to point out a few things that are really sort of general tips for browsing the website. Uh, you'll find our main navigation menu is this horizontal bar that goes across the top of your screen. You can see as I hover my mouse over it, uh, the sort of uh, subsections are opening up. Uh, and again, this so this this header up here, including the navigation menu, is going to say consistent no matter where you are on the website. So no matter what page you're looking 
at, you're always going to have this navigation menu right at the top of the screen, and you can always sort of look, and, and if you want to get to another section, uh, all you have to do is sort of hover your mouse over uh, and see where everything is. Everything's been divided uh, you know, uh, fairly intuitively, at least is the best that we could do it. Um, so really quickly, I just want to, um, you know, as, as I mentioned, the first thing we're going to talk about are sort of, uh, you know, how to learn about the NYGNB, how to keep up with what we're up to. Uh, so the first thing we'll look at is this about section here. Uh, and when you hover your mouse over the about section, you'll see all of our subsections here. Uh, and the first one we'll look at um, really briefly is our mission and history page. Uh, so if you aren't yet, you know, super familiar with the NYGNB, or even if maybe you uh, have been a member for a long time, but just want a little refresher on sort of what we're all about uh, and what we're up to and what we, you know, do routinely, uh, this is a great place to start, you know, to get to know our society a little bit. Uh, better. Uh, we have our mission statement, which I just shared with you, uh, but we have a total, you know, a total listing of everything we do, uh, including all of our programs and services, uh, the areas that we focus on. And here you'll find a lot of links, you know, to, to explore different aspects of our society uh, in general. And I'm certainly not going to follow all of these, but uh, again, if you're unfamiliar with us, this would be a really good place to start to get a feel for uh, what we do, uh, you know, why we are hopefully worth supporting and, you know, most importantly, how we can help you uh, in your own research. So you'll also notice here uh, within each section, uh, once you get to the page, you know, you'll always be able to hover above, you know, on the main navigation menu and, and go to any page within the section. But you will also see a section navigation menu pops up uh, and it'll always be in this upper left hand corner of the screen here. Uh, so the next uh, page in the about section I want to show you is the, our blog and social media page. Um, so our blog is, uh, you know, is, is found here. This is sort of the home of the blog. Uh, you can find a listing, a chronological listing of, you know, our most recent articles. And in general, you know, uh, our blog contains a number of different um, you know, types of content. Uh, we have a lot of news about what the society is up to uh, and what's going on, but we also, um, you know, have a lot of really helpful articles that are aimed at helping everybody, you know, improve their research, find new records, uh, and things like that. Um, you know, so I will show you uh, really quickly an example. Um, you know, we just wrote this one, uh, which was based on a webinar uh, that was done by Jen Baldwin of Find My Past, and she was lecturing the attendees on the uh, new New York Catholic records that have come online. Uh, and while we definitely recommend everybody watches that full webinar, which was absolutely chock full of information, our blog here sort of rounds up some of the, the high level, very general details uh, so that we can share crucial information about this record set um, you know, with everybody who wants to read the article. Uh, so, you know, I definitely recommend exploring, um, you know, our blog. Uh, if we go back, we also do uh, every time there is a new online record set released uh, that may be of interest to New York researchers, uh, we will always try to break that news as soon as we find out about it. Um, in fact, many times I'll find something online and drop everything I'm doing and start write a you know write a blog article right away uh, to get the word out. Um, you know, so. Uh, our blog is also a really good way to just stay up to date on what's available, what's coming online. Um, this example was from August. Uh, we had a, a really one week where we had several major record sets come online, uh, including the New York State Birth Index, which is a very big deal. Um, so again, this is a good way uh, to just keep up with the general uh, goings on of uh, family history research in New York. And so uh, the best way to keep up with us uh, and all of uh, this, um, you know, blog content and video content and things we're producing uh, will be to follow us on social media or sign up for our email newsletter. Uh, and I'm heading over to our free resources section, which I will, uh, you know, look at in more detail a little bit later in the lecture. Um, but I just wanted to point out this is a good, this is the page where you should go, uh, you know, especially if you're if you're new uh, to exploring the website. Um, but this will help you connect with us and stay connected with us. Um, I highly recommend. Uh, 
subscribing to our NYGNB email newsletter. Uh, we call it the NYGNB e news, uh, and we, you know, we do not send it out uh, very often. You know, we're not going to sort of uh, overwhelm your inbox with tons of emails. Uh, we typically send it out once every two weeks, or you know, about twice a month. Uh, and it's a really, you know, it's an, a, a substantial newsletter that rounds up all of the blog articles that we've published, uh, you know, since the last email newsletter, um, you know, any new any new videos that we've produced, uh, and then any news about the society, you know, if there's a new issue of one of our periodicals that's available online, uh, if we have an upcoming event that we want to make everyone aware of, um, you know, so so definitely the e, the e news is the absolutely the best way to stay in touch with us, um, you know, and it's it's uh, it's 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 free. It's it's totally free, and uh, there's a lot of really useful information out there. Uh, so definitely recommend signing up if if you haven't already. Um, and so we also do have social media presence. Uh, we are on Facebook and YouTube primarily. Uh, we're also on Twitter. Uh, so if you, you know, you can follow a link here to click over to our Facebook page. Uh, and this is another way, if you would like to stay up to date with us, uh, you can give us a like or a follow on Facebook. Uh, and, you know, this will give you sort of more up to date, uh, up to the minute, so to speak, uh, updates from us. Uh, whereas the E! News comes out every once every two weeks. Uh, you know, as soon as we publish a blog or as soon as we, you know, break some exciting news, you know, we put it up on Facebook right away. Uh, so, you know, that's a good, you know, a good way to keep up with us uh, in, a, in a very sort of active capacity. Um, and we have recently uh, started producing a lot more uh, video content, uh, and a lot of that winds up on our YouTube channel. So if you're into YouTube or into watching some webinars or shorter tip videos, I uh, definitely, definitely recommend subscribing to our channel on YouTube. Uh, we do a lot of sort of live interactive Q&As, uh, and we put the recordings up on YouTube. Uh, and then we also have, you know, very short little mini uh, tip or tutorial videos. Um, so that's definitely a good way to keep up with us as well. So heading back uh, to our About Us section, uh, I did just want to point out uh, the press and media section. Uh, this is basically a subset of our blog, uh, but if you're interested in sort of pure NYGNB news, you know, find out exactly what we've been up to recently, uh, see all of our press releases and things like that, uh, this is a good way to, to do that. Uh, we have, you know, filtered only blog articles that are relevant to NYGNB news and developments and things like that. Okay, so moving on from the events section, uh, I'm sorry, moving on from the about section, I would like to show you our events section. Uh, so we're going to, you know, moving to the right here, we're going to skip over collections and research and tools and resources because we're going to return to those in great detail uh, in a little while. Um, but right now I wanted to show you our events uh, page. Uh, this is where you can find a list uh, or a calendar view of all of our upcoming uh, events. Um, you know, right now you can see all of our stuff uh, for NYU. YGNB week, uh, which by the time you are hearing this recording, uh, we'll probably have wrapped up. Um, but if you scroll down, you can see a lot of other stuff that's going on. Uh, we have, you know, uh, lectures that we uh, sponsor and co-sponsor in New York City, uh, up, you know, occasionally up in Albany or out in Buffalo. Uh, so, you know, these and, and a lot of these are online webinars as well. So even if you don't live uh, super close to where our offices are in New York City, uh, it's still worth looking uh, here to see what's going on. Um, and again, we have an events listing in every single issue of the NYGNB e news. So that's also a very good way to see it. Um, and we'll just take an example. This is our fall benefit luncheon uh, coming up on October 26th. Uh, we're very excited to be featuring Russell Shorto, uh, who will be there to sign uh, copies of his books and, you know, give a talk uh, and mingle a little bit. Uh, and so, you know, you'll see um, a pretty standard information for a, an event here. Uh, you know, we have the location and the time and the date. Uh, you know, a little description of, of what the event is going to be about, uh, as well as links that you can click uh, to actually register and sign up for the event. Um, you know, many, um, you know, some of our events are ticketed, uh, you know, certainly especially our benefit events, uh, but we do have a lot of free lectures uh, that are open to the general public, uh, but we all do require you to register just so we can have an idea of exactly who's going to be coming. And really quickly, uh, the last thing I want to show you in this section is is the get involved. Uh, so if you are interested in becoming a member, you know, head over to this section. Uh, we have a page that details, you know, absolutely all of the member benefits that you receive. Uh, 
being a member of the NYGNB. Um, and then if you want to get involved even at a higher level, and you don't certainly have to be a member uh, to do this, but you know we are always actively recruiting volunteers. Uh, and we have a number of projects. Uh, if you would like to help digitize or index records, you know that's certainly uh, something we, we're always happy to have help with. Uh, but we have other sort of administrative event and office tasks that we often need a hand with too. So if you're just interested in pitching in, uh, it, it can be periodically, it can be regularly, um, you know, whatever works for your schedule, uh, head over to this page and um, fill out an interest form and we'll be in touch uh, about how uh, we might be able to work together. Okay, so let's head back to my slideshow here, restart it. So, um, of course, you know, the website is a really good way to keep up with sort of what we're doing and all of the news, but but it, it really goes beyond that. Um, you know, it's also a tool in and of itself that researchers can return to again and again for really useful information. Uh, we know, you know, that New York State research can be really challenging, and that's why our website has hundreds of pieces of content aimed at helping you become a better researcher and helping equip you with the knowledge that you need to navigate New York State research with expertise. So before we get into the details, I just want to take a moment to emphasize that I really do believe every single person watching this webinar will absolutely be able to find at least, probably more, uh, but at least one piece of content on our website that will teach you something you didn't know, that will help you, um, you know, become a more skilled and efficient researcher. So I absolutely, and, and this is for members and non-members alike, uh, there is definitely stuff to help you there uh, no matter what. So. I encourage everyone to go out there and explore, you know, not only our online records, but uh, the massive quantity of educational material we have as well. So we have over 200 articles uh, written by experts on New York State research uh, on a wide variety of topics. And these are housed in what we call the New York Knowledge Base. Uh, and I'll take you over there on the, web on the website in a second. But in general, um, you know, these, uh, these are, you know, from people who know New York State research the best. Uh, you know, they serve as research and finding aids for crucial record sets or really popular repositories. Uh, we have articles on methodology, everything from estimating dates to properly formatting citations. Um, we have guides to researching different ethnic groups and different immigrant groups, uh, as well as, you know, all religious denominations uh, in New York State. Um, you know, we have a, a large selection of curated bibliographies that contain sort of essential publications that you, you know, might want to go explore further uh, if you're interested in a particular subject. Um, you know, and there are all sorts of really interesting and in-depth uh, explorations of New York State history that that may not otherwise, you know, be found easily elsewhere because it might not be super interesting to the mainstream, but it, it's stuff that is really interesting and really relevant for genealogists. Um, you know, so there there's just so much stuff in there, uh, and it really you you need to go in there and see the articles for yourself um, because there is just too much uh, for me to to sort of summarize here. All of these articles can be browsed uh, by either the location that they're focused on uh, or by their uh, the article subject. Uh, so even though you know there's a lot of them, uh, we have tried to make it as easy as possible to sort of get to exactly what you're looking for or to just browse and explore uh, not all of them at once, but a subject that you might find particularly interesting. And so, uh, you know, while most of these are in the New York Knowledge Base, which is reserved only for NYGNB members, we do have 10 of these in-depth guides uh, that are free and open to the public. Uh, and we'll, I'll show you that's in our free resources section. I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but these are really some of the most foundational, you know, they, they tackle the most foundational uh, subjects and they address some of the most fundamental challenges of New York State research. Um, so these are guides that are absolutely worth exploring uh, for both members and non-members alike. 
So in addition to the many written articles that we have, we also have a rapidly growing collection of recorded video lectures. Uh, these are recordings of live webinars that we've done, uh, you know, and recordings of lectures that have happened at the NYGNB offices in New York City. Um, you know, as you may know, many of our webinars are free and open to the public while they're being broadcast live, uh, but the recordings are always available, uh, but they are only available to members of the NYGNB, uh, though we do actually have a few webinar recordings that are completely free and open to the public, uh, which will eventually be this one once the recording is up, uh, you know, and then those can be found again in our free resources section. And we do we do webinars all throughout the year, uh, and you know during NYG and B weeks, uh, which we have uh, this one in October, and we usually do one uh, in the early part of the year. Uh, for those, we usually have five or more webinars all in a single week, uh, and every webinar we run live will be recorded and it will be added to the library. So even by the time many of you are watching this recorded version, we'll have all of our webinars from NYG and B week in there, uh, and we'll be adding them each one as soon as uh, it becomes. Available. Okay, so sorry, I'm getting ahead here. So let's go over to the website and explore a little bit about uh, the New York Knowledge Base. Uh, so you can find the New York Knowledge Base under the Tools and Resources section. Uh, and I'll explain just a moment. Uh, when we say, you know, these tools and resources are, you know, again, related to research, but we think of these as things that will equip you to succeed in your own research, even before you actually begin that research. Um, so we're gonna look at a lot at the webinars and uh, the knowledge base, um, you know, but we do have other things that are available to help you as well. Uh, they aren't, you know, quite exactly related to the website, uh, so I won't cover them too much, um, but we do offer research services. Uh, so we have a professional genealogist, uh, actually a number of professional genealogists uh, that are available here to answer your questions uh, and, um, you know, uh, uh, talk about, uh, you know, give consultations or even perform research projects, uh, you know, on their own. So the uh, New York Knowledge Base, you know, again, you just, you find it right at the top of this section here. Uh, and you can, uh, this is sort of the home page, uh, and I will show you, uh, we usually have one featured article up here at the top. You know, you can click this button to go read it. Uh, but if you scroll down, uh, you'll see these three panels here. Uh, this one allows you to browse the knowledge base, uh, which we'll go to in a second. Um, these go to our county guides, which we'll also take a look at. Uh, and then around our website, you'll often see this help uh, center button. And, you know, I, I definitely recommend if, if you, you know, need uh, a little help on using the website or a little help with your research, uh, definitely visit the Help Center. Uh, I'll just show you really quickly. We have a lot of articles related, uh, either introducing you to the website, uh, how to activate your access to online records. Uh, you know, so if you're ever feeling a little bit lost or want some help, uh, we have a lot of good uh, instructional articles and videos in this section. So going back to the uh, knowledge base, uh, we see here that um, there are a bunch of different ways to browse. I, I can take you over um, you know, to a sort of an A to Z listing of all of our articles, uh, but if you scroll further down, you'll find a listing of recently updated articles here, uh, but you can also search. If you wanna search a, a, a term, whether it's like uh, cemetery records or religious records or a location, you can do that. Um, but you can also use these drop-down menus to browse. Uh, you can see the, the variety of different subjects we have articles you know, about. Uh, and you can just select any one from this list and you'll, uh, you'll be taken to see a list of articles just on that subject. Uh, and the same thing goes with uh, locations in New York State. Uh, if a certain uh, article pertains uh, specifically to a county, uh, you know, we will tag it with that county. So if someone is really zeroing in on ancestors living in a certain area, uh, you know, you may come to this list uh, and, and sort of filter everything out from there. Um, but the main way to explore the knowledge base is to go to this one right here in the center, browse the knowledge base. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll take you over here and you'll see this listing uh, is, is, you know, is going to give you um, 
you know, a, a, a list of all of our articles. Uh, we have pinned, uh, you know, recent ones and ones that are particularly important to the top of the list. Um, you know, but overall, uh, you know, if, if you want to just really explore absolutely everything, you can scroll down this list and you'll see a, a little short description uh, that's usually the first, you know, couple sentences of text from the article, you know, but you can click on the title of the article or click on this more button uh, to go actually view it. Um, and I do want to show you, you know, you can still filter by subject and location here, uh, as well as by author. And this is a really powerful uh, way to look through the knowledge base. Um, so, for example, let's look, uh, we can look, if we want to find everything related to census records, we would just select census. And you'll see this list automatically sort of populates with only articles, you know, related to the census. And likewise, you know, if, if you want to go, if you want to ever clear that, you just go back up, select any, and now you'll see everything else back here. Um, you know, but in the same way, if you wanted to look, uh, if we were researching Albany County, you know, in particular, we could filter out and find only articles that involve Albany County. Um, now, one note, uh, because there are, you know, sort of many levels of location in New York State, right? We have the whole state, we have the county level, we have the municipality level, you know, tagging articles is a little bit of a challenge in that sense. Uh, and so what we have done is we have kept everything at the county level. Um, but it's really important to note that with all of these location tags, uh, when we select Albany County, we're going to get articles that literally only pertain to Albany County. Uh, so this means that, um, you know, there will be articles, we have plenty of articles that cover the entire state of New York, um, but we didn't want to tag them up with, you know, 62 counties all individually. So I do want to point out this one really important location filter all the way down uh, will be New York State. So if you see something tagged New York State, that means that resource applies to the entire state as a whole, or at least to a huge you know, percentage of the counties so that we can really view it as a statewide resource. So if you are going to be filtering anything by location, whether it's a record set or a knowledge base article or a webinar, I highly recommend exploring that New York State location tag first because that's going to have material that applies to your county uh, and then you can certainly go and and see if you can narrow it down and look for things that you know pertain only to a specific county so i want to show you uh what a knowledge base article looks like uh let's take a look at uh this recently written one here uh and oh <laughs> so this is a good point uh, time to point out uh you know the knowledge base as i mentioned is is uh reserved for members only uh and so if you are a member and you have signed up and created a login account uh, it's really easy you can e you can always click here to log in at the top of the screen no matter where you are on the website once you're logged in you'll stay logged in and and you're not going to have to do it again uh, but if you aren't logged in and you you get to a page where you need permission uh, of membership uh, you'll always have this option option to just log in right here and I will go to my member account and then as soon as you're logged in whoops uh, you'll be taken right over to uh, the article that you are trying to view uh, so what we're looking at here is is, is an in-depth uh, research guide to a newly accessible resource found at the New York Public Library. Uh, and those are the records of the United States Sanitary Commission, um, which is re related to the Civil War. Um, I won't go into too much details about this collection, um, but this is a really good example of a knowledge base article uh, because it was written by uh, the uh, Susan Wade, who is who is heavily involved in managing and reorganizing the collection, which was done uh, just in 2013. It was a huge three-year process. Uh, so she is someone that knows this collection in and out. Uh, and as you can see, we'll just slowly scroll down the page here. Um, she's compiled a really extensive guide to this collection, and we've added some, you know, images and and other helpful things. Uh, you know, but this the, these articles will explain in depth, you know, what the collection is about what it contains uh, it'll tell you how it's organized uh, it'll have tons of links that will you know bring you to you know further finding aids or further directories um, you know so if you were going to you know research in the New York Public Library with you know in this collection you know this is an absolutely essential thing to have you know by your side uh, and you know it's something you can bring along as I mentioned we're, we're mobile these days so you can bring it on a tablet or a phone or something like that uh, and it can be be really useful uh, in that way. 
And scrolling back to the top here, I just want to show you a couple things that are common to every single blog article, every single webinar, every single e-library set. You know, all of the pages on our website have these really useful windows on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, these will help you discover content on our website that is related uh, to the location and to the subject of the article. So you can see here, because this is a really, you know, a collection that has records for people all over New York State, we've tagged it with the location New York State. So what we're looking at here, related by location, are other articles that are, you know, tagged with that same location. And, you know, as an example, if we were looking at something that was related specifically to Albany County, in this uh, list here, we would see other uh, articles or other webinars or other record sets that are also related to Albany, New York. So it's always a really good idea to, no matter what you're looking at, you know, check out these windows uh, on the side. Uh, you may see something that's really interesting that you might not have realized was there before. Uh, and then the same thing goes with the subject. Uh, so you can see this subject was tagged as military records or New York Public Library records. Uh, and so we're going to see uh, lists of resources for the New York Public Library here. Uh, this seems like a really good one, you know, overall listing of resources that are of interest to family history researchers. Uh, but then we also have uh, some military related content as well. Uh, so I definitely recommend, you know, you're obviously going to want to focus on sort of the main content in the middle of this here, uh, but you do also want to explore what's on the side because you can wind up discovering some uh, really interesting things. Okay, so let's head over to our uh, webinar section. So you will see a very familiar sort of interface here, and we've done this intentionally. So anytime you're gonna be browsing sort of a list of stuff on our website, whether it's the blog or the knowledge base or webinars, it, it's gonna follow the same general pattern of having you know, the most recent material listed sort of in uh, you know, descending order. And then you'll also have the ability to filter by subject or by location uh, you know, and then and narrow everything down. Uh, but so this is where you go. This is where all of our recorded webinars go. Uh, you know, as you can see, we have a, a wide variety of subjects. Um, you know, it's not, we, we have 200 plus, uh, you know, knowledge base articles and, and we have about 26, I think, webinars at the moment, uh, though it's growing fast. So, you know, the, the subjects are not quite as extensive, uh, but they're still there and they're growing and these are really useful. Um, we are, you know, very thankful to have some real experts come in and, uh, you know, and, and show us, uh, teach us and, and lecture us. Uh, and so here as an example is, is the Catholic Records webinar uh, that I was mentioning from uh, last week. Um, and this, uh, you know, you'll have a little description of the webinar. Uh, you'll have a click uh, a button you can click to download the PDF handout. And then if you want to watch the webinar, it's just, you know, embedded right here. Uh, and you can put it on full screen. You can turn up the speed if you want. Um, or you can just sort of let it run uh, and watch it right here on the NYGNB website. Okay, so let's head back uh, to our online records. Uh, so um, we have obviously have a wide variety of records that we have, uh, you know, um, you know, collected over time and digitized. Uh, and so what I want to do now is just sort of really generally review, you know, what's available and what our e-library is like, and then take you on a really quick tour and show you, you know, kind of how it works and how I recommend using it and, and things like that. So a really quick overview of the e-library. Uh, we our collections, you know, our offices are located in New York City. However, we're a statewide organization. Uh, we have resources and records that cover the whole state of New York. Uh, so those of us with ancestors upstate, you know, and downstate, uh, which I have both, uh, it's it's all really useful for. We have at the moment, we have over 50 individual collections uh, and they range from collections that cover the entire state of New York uh, to collections that we might consider very niche, uh, you know, very specific, but very rare. And if they relate to things you're doing or research you're conducting, uh, they are absolute, you know, absolute uh, lifesavers as far as discovering new things. So within all of these, we have the names of well over a million New Yorkers. I, you know, just uh, the archives of our periodical, The Record, has over a million New Yorkers itself. Uh, so there, is, there really are a lot of people to be found in our e-library. 
overall, I mean, as I said, we have a huge variety. You really have to explore to kind of uh, get a feel for everything we have. You know, uh, in brief, I would say, you know, we have religious records, cemetery transcriptions, uh, newspaper abstracts from a wide variety of different types of newspaper articles. Uh, we have a whole array of will and probate records from all periods throughout uh, New York State history, from the Dutch to the English to, you know, the state, obviously. Um, we have census records that uh, we have, you know, preserved and indexed with volunteers, um, you know, and, and, and like I said, we have records that date all the way back to the earliest settlers, uh, but then all the way up until, you know, the early to mid 20th century as well. So I'll just go do a really quick overview of some of our most popular collections before we begin to really explore. Uh, so, you know, the first one and, and you know, really our favorite is uh, the record. And the record is, the full name is the New York Genealogical and Biographical Society Record. And this is our quarterly periodical, which means it's published four times a year. Uh, and it has been published four times a year continuously since 1870. And this is, uh, I believe, the second oldest genealogy periodical in the country it's uh, a peer-reviewed journal so that means that you know it, it's essentially uh, you know the equivalent of an academic journal uh, that accepts only the highest quality work uh, and receives thorough peer review and vetting so you know everything in there is work of the highest quality uh, and they're really you know it's been published for you know 149 years now uh, and you know there is just so there are so many different things in there I uh, you know but sort of the general categories that we might might all be interested in are, you know, the those rare record set transcriptions that I mentioned earlier on. Uh, there are a lot of compiled genealogies of, of, you know, large New York families and New York lines. Uh, there are very interesting biographical sketches of, of, a, of a huge variety of New Yorkers, um, you know, that those may serve as guides, you know, for our own biographical sketches, if that's something you're interested in writing. Uh, you know, overall, there are lots of case studies. Um, and these case studies are not only really interesting to the genealogy enthusiast because they usually involve very unique challenges or very unique problems or mysteries, um, but they're done by the absolute experts. So you can follow along and you can see, you know, the methods they use and the sources they consult and, and the way they, you know, uh, construct their proofs. And, you know, reading the record absolutely will make you a better genealogist, even if you don't necessarily have, you know, family in there. Though, again, they're really, there's over a million people in there so it's very likely there's at least something that's directly of use to a line that you're researching. Another collection that I have mentioned uh, before is the New York State Religious Records Collection. Uh, and our records here are, you know, as I mentioned, abstracts and transcripts of the original records. Uh, they're done by, you know, members of the society or, you know, professionals within the society. So they're all very high, we, you know, they're, they're very high quality uh, and, you know, are usually sort of certified, you know, for their thoroughness. Um, they range from 1639 all the way up until 1914. Uh, there are counties all throughout New York State um, you know, primarily they consist of baptisms, marriages, and burials, you know, sort of traditional religious records. Uh, but the, you know, in many cases, the, the you know, uh, uh, Royden Woodward Vosburgh, when he transcribed them, he didn't just take the names of the people. He took the, you know, he transcribed the entire volume. So in many cases, uh, and, and he a lot of times did research, you know, original research himself. So in these volumes, you'll find narrative histories of the congregation and of the, and even sometimes of the denomination in that area of the state. So they can serve as really context, really good contextual resources as well. Um, because you, I mean, they're, they're, I've seen things that, you know, describe, uh, you know, migration patterns. And, and they say members of this church, they typically came from this town in Massachusetts or this town in Connecticut. And so this kind of uh, background and context can, if you do have someone in those records, can potentially help you find them in other locations as well. Uh, and as you see here, this image on the right isn't an example of the record, um, but it is a, a screenshot of a chart that we have on the record page, uh, which I'll, I'll show you in a second. Uh, and this lists every single congregation we have. Uh, you can sort by county or denomination or compiler. Uh, so, you know, definitely recommend um, at the very least browsing this list, which is open to members and non-members alike. So again, as mentioned, our New York State Cemetery abstracts uh, have, you know, uh, 
uh, expertly done transcriptions taken from headstones and other burial records. Uh, we have over 300 cemeteries that date back all the way into the mid 1600s even. Uh, you know, Josephine Frost's Long Island Cemetery transcription, you know, is, is a big chunk of this collection. Uh, and, you know, the expert researchers may recognize that the name of that collection. Uh, you can find, you know, bits and pieces of it here and there on the Internet Archive, uh, but we do have the only complete collection of that that's available anywhere. Uh, overall, we cover 20 counties in New York State with this. Um, and again, this is, you know, uh, obviously vital to research in general, but there is an element of historical preservation here because as this, these were being done, you know, this is in the early 1900s, up, up until the 1940s and sometimes even beyond. Uh, but in many cases, these cemeteries were sort of rapidly deteriorating and, you um, you know, uh, the information is, is has, has in many cases probably been lost. Okay, sorry about that delay there. So, uh, okay, so the New York Times Obituaries Index. Uh, this is something that was a recent uh, addition to our e-library. And uh, what it is, is it basically an alphabetized index to all New York Times obituaries. Uh, this was created by the New York Times uh, in the 1970s, I believe. And uh, this is a really useful because it can help you find the obituaries on the New York Times website, uh, which is usually, you know, uh, in in, in many cases free to access most of them uh, you know but it is a searchable database uh, that is kind of a text search database so it's not quite indexed up to our normal standards and it can be very difficult if you're just searching for a last name uh, but if you use this index you can find the exact issue and page and year that it appears on uh, and we actually did this as um, you know to assist them with a project uh, that they were working on earlier this year uh, and so we sort of rapidly digitized this so they were able to look at the data and manipulate it in, in ways that they needed for that project uh, and so we have actually the only digital copy uh, that is available you know anywhere uh, we, we were the first ones to digitize it you know with permission of course uh, and the New York Times is very kind to let us host it in our e-library um, so this is a new and you know somewhat exciting record set uh, for anyone who has an ancestor who might be listed here so I, I could spend all day just talking about all of our records, I, you know, but I did want to just throw up some of the the sort of the more interesting ones here. Again, we have over 50, so it goes well beyond this. Um, but we have um, a special collection of the 1855 census from New York City, which focused on Ward 17, which was a, a neighborhood on the Lower East Side uh, that was a heavy immigrant neighborhood. Um, and it uh, actually, a, a portion of it was burned uh, and, you know, down damaged in a fire. So the images were too delicate to be transcribed, or I'm sorry, to, to be uh, imaged on microfilm like the other areas of the 1855 census. Um, and actually in the early 90s, the NYGNB very delicately and slowly digitized images of these records. And then, in, then about a decade later, we had our volunteers go through and actually index the whole thing. So it's fully searchable. You can look at the original images, which are very high quality. Uh, and you know, if you have a family in this neighborhood, it can provide you with an amazing amount of detail about that. Um, as I mentioned, we have will and probate records. We have a lot of family Bibles. Uh, we have all sorts of newspaper abstract, you know, about both marriage and death announcements uh, and, and several other things. Uh, we have a, a court, another quarterly publication, the New York Researcher, which is um, sort of very colorful, sort of more magazine format. Uh, we have the full archive of that as well. Um, we have some really interesting uh, naturalization records from early in the 1800s. Uh, we have um, some inventories, some archive inventories that were created during the Great Depression, uh, which sort of look and they catalog at where different records are located within New York State. They can be really useful if you're looking for a particular record set. Um, and then we have some just really fascinating uh, records from the orphan masters of New Amsterdam uh, that span almost a decade uh, from that colony. Uh, and then one of our recent additions I think is really interesting, but it was um, uh, one of... Uh, 
a, a collection of transcribed and abstracted newspaper articles that mention uh, shipwrecked passengers or shipwrecks that were coming to America. These were often not captured in standard immigration records, so they're you know fascinating and, and oftentimes very tragic stories, but uh, they can also provide some really interesting information. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual e-library. Uh, I will use a couple examples of the record and our religious records to show you kind of exactly how to use them. Uh, so you head over to the collections and research section of our website. You just click on e-library. And you'll be here on the e-library homepage. You know, again, it's designed to look very familiar to that New York Knowledge Base homepage. Um, you know, again, if you need help, you can always visit the Help Center here. Uh, if you want to view a list of all our collections, this is definitely what I recommend doing is just, you know, clicking this button. Um, but we have, you know, our the record and probably our religious records are the two most popular collections that people use. So we decided to just create some really quick shortcuts here. And as I mentioned, in the same way with the with the knowledge base, you know, if you want to browse by subject, you can do that. Uh, if you want to browse by location, you can do that as well. Uh, or if you want to search, um, you know, you can enter a search term right here. Uh, but I'm going to take you up and want to view a list of all of our online records. All right, so here again, familiar interface. Uh, it, you know, there is information including the record set title here, uh, as well as the category it is, uh, and whether it's an index in images or is it, if it's an image only collection. Uh, you can filter by subject here if you want to, um, you know, or you can filter by location or format. Um, and so I recommend just exploring this. This is open to everybody. You know, as I mentioned, only NYGNB members can can search and view images, but everybody can look at the collections and, and read about them and learn about what they are. Uh, so uh, let me take you over to the religious records collection first. And this is, so this is really important. I know the temptation is that we all just want to go click the search button or click the browse button and just get over there and, you know, start plugging names in. And, and, and I, you know, I definitely get that, but I, I really highly recommend and, and really everyone at the GNB always recommends doing a little bit of pre-research and really digging into that collection and learning as much as you can about it. It's going to help you make much better use of it and you'll understand, you know, a lot more about those records. So with every single page on you know the e-library you will see buttons where you can search and browse up here but i highly recommend scrolling you know holding off and scrolling down a little bit you know more and you'll find some really useful information that describes some background about the questions uh, i'm sorry background about the records uh, it you know it may answer questions you have about the record sets. Uh, it'll give you an idea of what you may hope to find, uh, and we always try to add as much detail as we can to really equip you for success. Um, you know, so I wanted to use this example because this is um, you know a, a table that we've included uh, with the religious records that lists every single congregation we have as well as um, you know when relevant the dates that it covers uh, and you can also see you know what the county is what the denomination is or even who the compiler was and then there's a link to search directly you know to search only that congregation or to browse only that congregation uh, and you can you can sort this list um, you know any way you want you can sort it alphabetically if you'd like um, you know but and and again this is open to everybody so if if you just want to get kind of familiar with our collections uh, and especially see what you know uh, what denominations and what congregations we have I definitely highly recommend looking at this. And so before we do a demonstrate a search, I'll just take you over uh, back to uh, the record. And that's going to be the second one up here. And again, uh, you know, definitely recommend looking, you know, reading down here, read about what's in the record, what you can find, uh, you know, how many issues there are. And and I do want to also point out again, we have these these this related content here on the left hand side of the screen, uh, and it's uh, it's 
really useful, especially for uh, for these record collections, uh, because we have added a lot of you know indexes and different things that will help you know assist your research. Uh, so definitely recommend exploring our indexes. We have a great uh, blog article. I, I don't have time to really dive into them today, um, but we have a really great blog article about all of our indexes to the record. I will make sure it's in the syllabus, uh, so you can click through to read about those in detail. Uh, and again, our indexes to the record uh, are open to the general public. So if you haven't yet joined and you're kind of curious what might be available in the pages of the record, uh, definitely recommend that you explore, you know, either search the names in there uh, or look at the different uh, articles by title or subject or something like that. So when you do want to search, uh, you want to click through on the search button, and this is going to open up a new tab in your browser, and it's going to bring you over to findmypast.com. And Find My Past is where all of our online records are hosted. Uh, as I mentioned, we're, we're currently building an e-library to host them back on our website, uh, but at the moment we are really happy to have Find My Past, you know, assist us with this really complex and kind of resource-intensive, uh, you know, process of hosting this these large quantities of, of data. Um, so when you click over here, you will have to um, sign in to your Find My Past account. Uh, and again, I'm not going to go into the details of this because it's it's well explained in uh, you know the help center and in emails that new members receive. Um, but you do need to perform a, a brief activation that will activate your access to NYGMB records. Uh, we have a whole tutorial on how to do that and a, a video. It's really short and really simple. Uh, you only need to do it one time and then your access will continue through the duration of your NYGNB membership, um, you know, but it is always a good idea, uh, you know, to, to sign in uh, as soon as you get over to Find My Past. So I will do that now. Okay, oops, and then we'll get back to the record here. Okay, so uh, you know you you are at the moment you are not able to search all of our record collections at once. Uh, that's a feature that we're working on in the new e-library. But for the moment, uh, you know the the searches are limited to collection specific searches, um, which again is not really a, a bad a bad thing because it uh, you know forces you to sort of focus your research and really drill down into what you're looking for uh, as opposed to performing those those super broad and though you know generally easy and sometimes interesting uh, every every record searches. Um, so when you go, uh, you know, when you click that search button, you know, from any record set, you'll be taken over to the specific search page, you know, for those records. Uh, and here, you know, the, this is a, you know, a, a pretty standard, straightforward kind of genealogy search screen. Um, you know, we can type in a last name here. Uh, if we want to apply a filter, if we know, if we've seen a citation perhaps, and we know, you know, we're looking for uh, volume 120, I can type that in and I see the little 120 pop up here and I'll select that to add it to my uh, search. And then I can click here to actually uh, run the search and view the results. And you'll see the, the here you'll see the the name of the article that it appears in, and then if you want to you know click over to view the PDF, uh, you can see the image you know that it actually appears on here. Uh, and one thing I want to point out because some of our users sometimes miss this, uh, you know right here we're looking at a single page you know from uh, that issue, but if you do want to go forward or backward to the next page, you can easily just hit the next or the previous button. Um, you know, and this is useful if you're browsing something like a census perhaps, uh, but it's also really useful if you, uh, you know, want to, um, you know, read an entire article in the record. Uh, obviously, if you find someone's name on one page, uh, you know, the, the adjacent content might be of interest to you. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out is there are, in many cases, two versions of a record set. Uh, right here, you know, we were searching the record, but you can also browse the record. Uh, and you can browse many other of our record sets. And this will bring you over to a similar looking search page, uh, but it's not going to allow you to, to query by names or keywords. But what you can do is you can look at an entire volume. So let's go back to that volume 120 and we'll apply the filter. 
And we see now the results are all issues within volume 120. So if I, you know, and, and this is how many people find us is they'll see a citation uh, in a family tree or in, in some other source, you know, that lists a volume and a, and a page number of the record. And so this is where you would go to actually find that volume. And when you click on, on the uh, image icon, you'll be taken, you know, this screen, it looks a little different than the previous one. It's a little more conducive to, to reading, you know, uh, lengthy, you know, uh, amounts of information. Uh, and you can easily just, you know, uh, flip back and forth. Um, you know, you can hop to a page, you can take a look at the contents, uh, and you can, you know, change the page number here. We can jump to page 25 right away. Uh, and so this is a good way if you if you're interested in an article or you want to read a full issue or something like that, um, this is definitely a good way a good way to do that as well. All right. So again, uh, if you go if you head over um, to the help center, uh, and oh, actually, um, yeah, let me let me get over there real quick. So if if you are you know wondering and you want a little more you know specific instruction on how to use the website and and to do sort of the more basic things, including you know using the e-library just itself uh, as well as activating your access to online records, I definitely recommend visiting the website. Um, you know you can go if you've just joined and you're a new member or you just want to refresh. Uh, we have a whole list of you know uh, videos that introduce you to the website. Uh, you know uh, show you how to use the different different sections, um, you know, as well as the e-library uh, and how to activate your online records and things like that. Um, you know, so we're always happy to talk to you on the phone or answer via email, but in many cases, your, you know, your questions can be answered by looking at that help center and watching one of those videos. All right, um, so I think we're running out of time here, and I, you know, I, I wish I had a, a lot more, um, and we, we will hopefully do this again soon and go into a little more depth. I, you know, but I do want to thank everybody for attending. I, and let me uh, get back to our slide here, and I, you know, again, any questions, I absolutely, you know, um, type them into that question icon on the on the right side of your screen. I will get back to you right away. Um, and again, the, the handout that accompanies this is going to have links to everything I've covered, as well as links to things that I didn't have time to cover. Uh, I'm going to include some of our absolute favorite and most important resources in there, uh, including some of our favorite free subject guides. Uh, I did not have time to go into our guide to New York State Vital Records, but that's a really challenging area of New York State research, and we have in our free resources section, we have an absolutely comprehensive guide uh, that gives you everything you need to know about finding your ancestor's birth, marriage, or death certificate in either New York City or elsewhere in New York State. Um, so, so definitely, uh, we'd love to hear from our members or our website visitors or our community members. Um, and again, this this website is, you know, we view it as sort of a living entity. So, uh, we want to hear if you think something could be improved. Um, you know, absolutely, let us know if something is unclear anywhere. Let us know, and we're very quick to improve and make updates. Uh, and again, keep, you know, um, you know, remind you to um, sign up for the e news. You know, follow us on Facebook. Uh, a recording of this webinar will appear on our website uh, within 10 days, probably a lot sooner. Um, you know, so I hope this has provided a very general overview for you uh, and really appreciate you taking the time to watch and listen uh, and hope you have an excellent end to your day.